And now, CL 650 presents your source for leading edge news and information on today's hottest products and services. This is Experts on Call. Can't hear anything. No. Didn't hear music, didn't hear anything. Yeah. Not a thing. Not a. Can hear you. But not in the headset. Oh, that's better. We go. can now hear ourselves. No. There we go. Maybe we can hear I the the key in for the I music. I can't hear anything. Still. Okay. Nothing. Nothing now. We hear you, Dan. No, I can't. Ah, there we go. <laughs> I can hear Dan. <laughs> Whoa. Your your volume is way down. <clears throat> oh. I turned it way up. Oh, okay. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Excellent. And now, and now, CL 650 presents your source for leading edge news and information on today's hottest products and services. This is Experts on Call. Welcome to Strata Fub. <laughs> uh oh. We'll just try that one more time, shall <laughs> Strata we? Strata Fub. Yeah. And now, and now, CL 650 presents your source for leading edge news and information on today's hottest products and services. This is Experts on Call. And welcome to Strata Life on CIL 650's Experts on Call. I'm Tony Giovento, the Executive Director of the Condominium Homeowners Association, which is a consumer association in the province of British Columbia that provides resource, service, and education for Strata corporations uh, pretty much across the province. Uh, and joining us in the studio tonight, we have Dan O'Hearn from Key Pacific Property Management, uh, Gord Lee of CMW Insurance, and Albert Atfield from CanStar Restorations. And this show we're going to talk about as the Christmas show, mm. kind of our wish list of all the things that we would like to see get better and things that people should do that even though they know better they're not doing but they should be doing um, and how we can kind of transcend some of the problems and challenges that exist for Stratas. So welcome all of you to the studio. Thank right you. on. Thanks Tony. Uh, Dan we'll start with you. Oh. Yeah, we're going to put you right on the hot seat. Yeah. While, while, right you're, while yeah. you're saying that, I, yeah. I was thinking to myself, okay, all of our wish list. I mean, how long is this show going to be today, Tony? Yeah, well, we're going for six hours. So how about how about give us three, your top three, your top three pet peeves and how you can get your top three um, items you think that should be uh, better for Strata Corporations? Well, um, I'm looking forward to hearing everyone else's list, but... Um, what I wanted to talk about uh, was was uh, focusing on on improving the building uh, for resale value. I think that's something that you know today's real estate market. We're all uh, investing a lot of money in our condos, and I think we want to make sure that uh, we're getting good resale value. So it all starts with uh, proper and adequate budgets. And uh, Strata Corporation, uh, it's it's not a big house with a lot of people living in it. Uh, what it is, it's more like a commercial public building and uh, multifamily, multi-million dollar corporation. And uh, we have to operate it like that. Um, you know, you don't want to be thinking that this is a family financing. Uh, your role as a council member is to budget for professional, commercial grade uh, workmanship and materials. And, uh, and I think we sometimes lose uh, sight of that and they're trying to... Um, uh, cut the budget so tight and and require or help expect help from volunteers and that's just going to be a problem down the road well and i expect that that's one of the issues that people forget that the act contemplates is that underlying duty to maintain repair and insure your property because you have to protect property values mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. it's not good enough to just say we're just going to let things kind of deteriorate over time at some point as we know now people at, with 40 year old buildings are having to suck it up and basically fund 50 or a hundred thousand dollars for major repairs because they've ignored their buildings for the last 40 years exactly and um you know, from our perspective, operating a building with a tight budget is way more challenging than one that's got a proper budget. Because what happens is you just lead to a lot of disappointment. You you defer all the maintenance and all the repairs to the end of the fiscal year, and then you pick the top three things that you can afford to fix. Meanwhile, you've left a dozen things unrepaired. And I don't think that's good for anyone. Certainly doesn't reflect well in the building, right, when it comes to resale. Um, similar, uh, I'd like people to focus on um, common areas um, you know these areas need to look good there's no sense making your suite look really wonderful and fantastic if the uh, the the rest of the buildings in poor condition and the first impressions aren't good so if people walk into the lobby and it's got hand-me-down uh, sofas and it's got wallpaper for them from the 1950s it's not a good impression and you could have the most wonderful suite but no one's going to invest buy it from you if 
the rest of the building isn't up to par. So I think if you've got limited budget, spend it on, on keeping the common areas uh, up to date, modernized, and, uh, and looking proper. That being said, there mm. is a building in White Rock that has 1950s carpeting and lighting and wallpaper. Yeah. Uh, and they have done such an amazing job of preservation in this building. It's it's a classic. Now. That's, that, that is a di <laughs> and that's a very different story, isn't it? Yeah, it's a classic. It's, it's almost a heritage building. It, it really is such a classic. But, but that transition stage spent... between brand new and becoming a classic is so critical. <laughs> <laughs> but they also really fund their strata fees incredibly well. Yeah. So they have the money to maintain all those components. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the other thing we've talked about lots is a depreciation report. So, uh, you know, let's, let's get one done and let's put a funding model of some sort uh, in place and communicate it to the owners or put, and potential buyers. Um, you know, I, I also do real estate sales and, and uh, it was a couple months ago we, we sold a, a townhouse and uh, they didn't have a, a funding model in place, but what they did have in the minutes very clearly that they anticipate in year 2017 and year 2020, you know, certain um, special levies. And you do a quick calculation what your unit uh, would have to pay towards that. And the purchasers were totally okay with it. Uh, they understood going into this that there was extra money that have to be putting into it uh, years down the road and they're okay with it. So I don't think it's something to be frightened off by. I think it's something that you, you got to embrace and plan. Well, one of the challenges we have with strata corporations now, again, we see them all over the lower mainland. They're 40 years old, 30 years old, haven't done any maintenance and repairs, and they're facing big, huge special levies that people can't pay for. And depreciation reports are excellent for that because they help us to defer <clears throat> or look at the, not defer, but look at the planning for the renewals of these projects and maybe start providing some funding in advance. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, the, the million dollar question, which you probably get asked um, and your managers get asked all the time, and I, I think all of our staff in the offices always get asked, is um, what's the right amount for strata fees? How much should our strata fees be? Do they compare with other properties? And and it's a, it's a question that nobody can answer because each building is different and needs to be assessed as to what you really need to maintain repair and protect your property value. That's very true, and it's going to reflect what the the owners themselves want, right? Um, but but uh, you and I have talked about this. Why is it that a building in some neighborhoods um, identical <coughs> compared to other neighborhoods have very different maintenance fees? And it's not, the buildings are identical, their maintenance costs are identical, the contractors working on them are identical. It's, it's the, the wishes of the ownership to, um, to keep the fees very low. And uh, down the road, um, you look at a five or 10 year old building that's been well maintained uh, compared to others that haven't, uh, they don't show their age very well. Yeah. Well, and you can avoid a lot of damages that otherwise cause a lot of risks and liabilities. Which yeah. kind of leads us over to Gord today. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, what, what, you know, Gord, um, CMW Insurance, uh, you guys, of course, are the ones that get the phone call when um, a pipe is broken, there's a fire, somebody has fallen and hurt themselves on a site, there's a, a lawsuit, you know, all of the insurance issues that you guys deal with. What, how would you encapsulate this into three kind of focus areas or that, that might be beneficial for Stratus to look at? Well, so number one, I would say is that we know for a fact that less than 50% of unit owners have insurance coverage for their own contents and unit or whether or whether it's even if it's a rental unit. So I think the number one thing is protect your contents, your investment, your unit by purchasing proper insurance. Um, like you said, Tony, when we get calls, you know, the easiest or the best, I think that the the nicest thing we could say is that, you know, you're covered not to worry. We'll get adjuster to contact you and you're looked after. The worst calls we get is we tell them, you know what? Yes, there's strat insurance, but your unit's not covered. Your improvement's not covered. And that you're going to have to move out and you're going to have to find a place to live because there's no coverage for that for the, under the strat insurance either. Those are the worst calls. So when they have personal insurance, then we can say, you know, you need to contact your personal insurance, which will look after you for these things that the strat insurance does not provide coverage for. So that's the number one wish list, I would say for sure, is people, you know, buy yourself a good Christmas present, mm. but 
make this as a, as a present for yourself too because it's to protect your investment and yourself. Well, and we know in some buildings that have had some major claims that less than 30% of the people yep. have had homeowner insurance. And that really creates a huge crisis for the strata because uh, living out expenses are just one part of it. Um, but the restoration of the building is, is one section, but all of the personal property, all the betterments, yes. uh, you know, all even the removal of personal, personal contents that should be covered under their homeowner policies, they suddenly don't have the homeowner policy coverage to deal with all these things. Yeah, these people are displaced, and I mean, recently we've seen one a bad claim that came out, and it's like seventy percent people had no insurance. Right. So you know they all look to the strata for coverage, and there's limited coverages that are available, and you know we feel really bad about it, but um, you know what they needed to do is get their own insurance, and even even in cases where it's not a really difficult claim, we're gonna see situations where um, there's coverage that that are not um, crossing over on their own personal side and they need their own insurance, you know, um, whether the strata's got a big deductible and so they're not getting coverage and they go, well, the strata insurance, but it, right. but it happens to have a large deductible, they need their own content insurance and they might be victim of, you know, a leak through another unit, but. Which is know. often the case. Yes, right, right. often the case. And they right. will say, well, that's not really fair. Shouldn't the other unit owner, you know, look after me? And right. that issue gets, you know, it, it becomes sometimes a legal issue. And ten and twenty five thousand dollar deductibles are pretty common these days, yes. um, especially when you consider the number of units in a building. If you know if you have a single family home and there's a pipe break, only that area is damaged. Whereas if you have if you're in a fifteen hundred square foot penthouse unit and there's a pipe break, it's quite possible that five, ten, fifteen, twenty five units may be damaged. Um, and so the costs and the comp the compounding costs are pretty significant. And, 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 you know, it's not just those big costs. It's a little one. That, you know, Al Albert can probably talk to it. If you have uh, damaged um, a flooring and all your furniture needs to be removed and you don't have homeowner, homeowner's insurance, um, does the restoration come in and, and remove the furniture and store it for them for free? No. No. And, <laughs> and part of that problem becomes the responsibility of what happens if I move the furniture and somebody damages mm -hmm. it. There's always those issues that come to play, right? So it, it's a very cautious yeah. for, for a forward step moving on it. You know? For a policy that's under $500 often, right? Um, you know, just clearing your contents out of your, out of your condo is going to cost you more than $500 typically if you're to hire someone. And these are some of the realistic problems we have mm -hmm. around housing affordability too. You know, it's fine to say, well, I can finally afford to buy a condo, Yeah. but are the strata fees going to be enough that I don't have future special levies? Mm -hmm. What are all my utility costs mm -hmm. going to be? Because people did move into condos thinking most of the stuff is covered. Um, you're still going to be paying for your cable and your high-speed internet and your utilities. Yeah. Um, what am I going to be pay paying for in, ins in insurance in addition to those things that I'm managing. What am I paying for for taxes? Um, are there going to be some additional requests for funding for costs for the future? So, you know, it's, it's a much bigger global perspective on housing affordability for people than just whether I can make the down payment and make the mortgage payments for yep. the next five years. And that's one of the things that we're facing, especially in buildings that are older buildings where young families have bought in because they can buy bigger units at lower prices, but now they're faced with major repairs and it's a huge financial crisis for them. So, yeah, it's one of the challenges that we certainly have in the industry. Yeah, it's a vicious circle. You know, the repairs don't get done. They don't have the funds for it. And the next thing you know, there's a lot of insurance claims that come out of it. Those claims, there's deductibles. And then next thing you know, the deductible starts to increase and, and the premium increase. And so it becomes a, it's just a snowball effect. So I think, yes, like what Dan said, getting the budget right, doing the proper maintenance, it's probably going to save the average strata a lot more money and a lot more headaches in the long run. Um, by not having that proper budget, you're not saving yourself money. Right. Yeah, I know it, may, it makes an enormous difference. So homeowner insurance, there's one for you. What's number two? Number two, if you're going to go away at any time, especially this holiday season, um, I think, you know, just make sure someone comes in and checks your home on a regular basis, you know, um, preferably on a daily basis, um, just to make sure things are okay. You know, in the event there's a small leak, it could be, you know, the water could be shut off and looked after right away. You don't want to come back from holidays and see your unit flooded out and be surprised by that. <laughs> and it happens all the time. We, we get calls and, you know, for townhomes especially, you know, where they're, they're independent. And we've seen claims come in and they go, yeah, you know, the neighbor called in after the water ran out the front door out of the, you know, the, the, the park, mailbox. The <laughs> <box>. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, so, you know, that's a horrible way to return from holidays or at any time. And so um, just be careful with that. You know, most policies in 
where it gets colder, hopefully we don't have a cold winter, um, it's mandatory that you have someone check your home on a daily basis um, if you're away for more than four consecutive days, right. you know, um, for freezing of pipes to get that coverage, you know, to make sure that coverage is still valid. Well, even in the past few weeks when we had temperatures going down to minus eight, it's quite easy to have frozen pipes in older buildings if we're dealing with insulation issues and we're dealing with water circulation issues in un unheated areas. Yeah. So, you know, we, we did have issues with frozen pipes in the past few weeks. So that occurs and we're yes. not we're not immune to it at all. Um, uh, have your home checked. That's that's a bit of a challenge for some people, though. You know, that's you know, if you're in an apartment building, you're in a high rise building. Um, what happens if you don't have someone that you can provide a key to and you are gone away for a month? You know, how do you get your home checked on a regular basis? Uh, what if what if you don't have a network in your building that you have other people who can do that for you? Or, you know, you don't have an access agreement with somebody to do that. It's at some point the risk for the owner. If you, yes. it, I think the owner who is in that situation needs to understand that if there is a flood and the water's coming out of your unit, it's, it's going to be an emergency and somebody's going to probably have to break into your unit. Um, and there are a lot of other compound costs um, and associated damages yeah. you could be faced with. Yeah, I think in those cases, you know, you just have to do the best risk management as possible. I don't think every everybody's in that ideal situation to have people to go into a unit. But, you know, in those cases, maybe if you have your individual shut off for those units, you know, shut the water down, try to drain the pipes, you know, drain any anything like toilet tanks and all that. And hopefully that reduces your risk of having, you know, burst pipes and things like that. And make sure right. the heat is on, not to right. shut the heat off and try to save that, you know, two, three dollars or five dollars that, you know, you might save, but at the end could cost you thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. We had quite a wave last year at this time, and I expect it again this year, of refrigerator ice makers uh, with water hookups that are causing problems. That uh, oftentimes because the they're being delivered and they're being hooked up by somebody who isn't qualified to hook them up. It might be the homeowner, it might be the delivery people, but that that's one of the one of the pitfalls that homeowners need to be aware of is that they have responsibility for their appliances in their unit that may actually fail. Yeah, and those I think are almost guaranteed to fail. From what we've seen, <laughs> it's almost like a lifetime. <laughs> and it, it's I a... have not hooked mine up <laughs> because of that. Yeah, maybe Tony is this season is because people finally have taken time off and they're using those that ice maker to, because once mm. they take that ice out and as a water refill, mm -hmm. it. That's when it starts to leak and yeah. fail. Yeah, and people go on holidays and their fridges are filled and, yeah. you know, there are all kinds of issues come up <laughs> out of that. Uh, there's two. What about number three? Number three, I think, for a unit owner, if I was a unit owner, um, understand your bylaws, your responsibilities, and what the insurance strata, what the strata insurance cover and not cover. And that goes back to number one is that what it doesn't cover, you need to buy your own insurance to cover that gap to protect yourself. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I think every owner and every tenant should always read the bylaws. That's, yeah. that's a, But then every strata corporation should also always make sure they have a complete set of bylaws available for owners. And that's another chronic problem. And we'll get back to that when we come right back after these messages. This is Experts on Call on CIL 650.